dear students today we shall be discussing uh, an article by professor ravinder kaur who is based at delhi iit the title of the article is positioning or locating humanities and social sciences in institutes of technology so when you look at a uh, article title like this the first question that springs to your mind is why why do we position humanities and social sciences in institutes of technology like iits nits or any engineering colleges the answer lies in the very question itself that there is a need a felt need for teaching social sciences and humanities and technology institutes now why are we doing this article in this course because the very course title suggests that it is a course uh, on science technology and society hence the the course intends to establish a relationship between science technology and the society the scientific development uh, technological advances and its impact on society or vice versa now this is a subject which is the which is considered as a sub branch of sociology science technology and society can be considered as uh, synonymous with sociology of science which is a sub branch of sociology hence a course which is being floated from sociology is being taught uh, let us say in engineering institutes to btech students to mtech students to engineering students in general why do we have to teach a course of sociology to engineering students what is the position of social sciences in general in technology institutes since we are doing a course on science technology and society i felt that we must discuss this issue in some details and hence the inclusion of this article by ravinder kaur which is titled locating humanities and social sciences in institutes of technology the question that the article examines is the structural map of the universities as well as technology institutes and explores the political economy which differentially values the contribution of various forms of disciplinary knowledge various forms of disciplinary knowledge social sciences humanities psychology sociology economics metallurgy electronics Uh, mathematics chemistry these are different or uh, various forms of disciplinary knowledge but it is a market economy it is a political economy which differentially values the contribution so the contribution of each of these disciplines are differentially rated thanks to the political economy political economy you can look at the market economy market sometimes gives importance to certain subjects certain disciplines and the knowledge uh, that emanates from such, so, such disciplines for instance management management has become a uh, very hot topic of discussion not only in academics but also in industry industry values that industry values a management graduate or a mba professional or somebody who has uh, taken a degree from indian institute of management any of the ims hence their their importance has increased and the uh, a management professional who has taken a degree from im gets a high salary gets a lucrative position similarly sometimes the political current political uh, ideology which is being propounded by uh, the the government at the center or the state at the level of state they decide which discipline should be given more importance which discipline should be emphasized upon whether it can be a subject like sanskrit or a subject like um, value education or a subject like economics so those subjects start getting more priority get starts getting more funding starts getting uh, more importance in the academic setup hence this is what ravinder kaur suggesting once he says that the political economy differentially treats differentially 
ranks differential values the disciplinary different forms of disciplinary knowledge and in this context we are looking at the, the importance or the value of social sciences in technology institutes in particular and the role of social sciences in the society in general. Now, she says the subjects like English literature, economics, psychology, sociology, philosophy, they are all taught along with engineering disciplines at technology institutes. But why are they, why they are there in the first place? Because the students of engineering are not there to get a degree in social sciences. The students are there to get a degree in engineering. It is their engineering background and it is their understanding of engineering knowledge that is going to take them far in their career prospects. So why isn't it a vestige of time to, con to have subjects like social sciences? Isn't it a vestige of time to have subjects like uh, humanities and engineering institutes? No. Subjects like so uh, sociology or psychology, though it is a well established subject for the last 200 years, but when it comes to the positioning institutes of technology, their validity or their value, their importance is not self evident. It has to be proved. Such proof has come from initially the, the uh, university structures or uh, the modeling of universities at America. For instance, the rationale for general education program at Purdue University is given as the such courses are integral part of engineering curriculum. The rationale provided for general education program at Purdue University argues that such programs, such disciplines, such subjects are integral part of engineering education, engineering curricula. It enables that the engineering students, the understanding of subjects in social sciences enables, helps the students of engineering to appreciate the world in which they live and work. It provides a framework for rational inquiry, critical evaluation, judgment and decisions when dealing with issues that are non-quantifiable and ambiguous or controversial. Now, social sciences have that distinct age over engineering sciences or natural sciences. It provides a framework to understand the very society we live in to appreciate the different cultural diversity, different uh, societal norms, values. It helps us to appreciate and understand that not everything is quantifiable. There are many things which cannot be put in black or white terms. It cannot be put in either or terms. There are certain gray zones which one has to understand within the framework of social science disciplines or humanities disciplines. It enables us to have rational understanding of human behavior, to understand human behavior through logic and reasoning. Social sciences enables the engineering students to undertake such rational inquiry. It enhances the ability of engineering students to study things, study societal norms, values in non-quantifiable measures, that is qualitative stuff, things that cannot be put in numbers, but it has to be understood anyway. And that framework comes from social sciences and humanities. Things can be ambiguous, things can be controversial. Uh, uh, for example, a, a building of dam, 
it is not a straightforward question for civil engineers or the in maybe it is uh, about how to build a dam but building a dam also involves displacement it involves relocation of millions of people thousands of villages uprooting of villages from their ancestral land relocating them somewhere else it involves disturbing the human settlements it is not a easy thing the very dam building process may be easy but the things that are involved in dam building such as relocation resettlement these issues can be controversial can affect human lives such issues can be best understood within the framework of social sciences or humanities now lewis committee on educational survey of 1947 stated that mit should emphasize four general areas of education and each area is to be organized as separate school with its own dean hence those emphasis given to four general areas of education and they are engineering sciences natural sciences architecture planning and humanities and social sciences now these are the four major areas of education that mit emphasizes on that is mit is massachusetts institute of technology it emphasizes on education in four this uh, four of these general areas of education now the the ordering in which it i have written on the blackboard is not the order or not the ranking given to different subjects it means that humanities and social sciences have written at the end it does not mean that it occupies a lower rank in terms of overall hierarchy of uh, different disciplines it's just that i wrote it that way now that is the idea that there has to be equal emphasis given to all these areas of education there is no ranking one subject cannot be considered as superior to the other this is the idea and hence the mit for instance is known both for its engineers as well as social scientists if you know noam chomsky is one of the foremost intellectuals of the world he is a great linguist or thomas kuhn great historian of science he also spent a lot of time at mit so there are so many other names who happen to have made tremendous contribution in the field of history linguistics psychology sociology they found a place in a premier technology institute like mit hence the importance of social sciences and humanities is without any question in engineering education now while mit tried to humanize the scientists harvard which was <coughs> from the beginning trying to scientize the humanist that is how rabindranath kaur the article author puts it that harvard has always laid emphasis on 
uh, technologists on scientific uh, knowledge production and importance given to education delivery in scientific subjects, scientific disciplines. Now, in, in <coughs> undergraduate curriculum in United States, for instance, the students have a almost free choice of electives spanning arts and sciences. Undergraduate students have a free choice in American universities in terms of choice of electives. And this choice of electives uh, can be from humanities, from social sciences, from engineering sciences, from natural sciences, from architecture. Now, that idea is that to give students an overall uh, understanding of different aspects of society, so that when they graduate, they have developed a solid framework to understand and appreciate the world they live, the world in which they work. Now, why such uh, importance given to uh, humanities and social sciences in American universities? Ravinder Kaur says that it is primarily because that controversy regarding the, the American intervention in Vietnam, the Vietnam War that America was engaged in, it led to questioning the ethical neutrality of the scientists working in, in universities. The scientist said that whatever is happening in campuses, outside the campus, outside the university does not concern us. We are concerned in, uh, concerned with hardcore research. We are concerned with uh, find, finding new scientific technologies. But it is for whom? It is for the very society that the scientists are working on. They need to respond to the political situation, political upheavals, political conflict that are happening in the country during that time. The scientists, the technologists, academicians in general cannot stay neutral. They must respond, react to the social, political, economic upheavals uh, that are happening around them. One cannot remain ethically neutral. One cannot remain value neutral to such issues. That was the argument which gained momentum at the height of Vietnam War in US. And that led to a lot of subjects in uh, engineering institutes particularly, which gave emphasis to humanities and social sciences. For instance, the very rationality or irrationality of this war, Vietnam War, it led to creation of program such as values, technology and science at Stanford University. So, they developed, formulated this course, values, technology and science at Stanford University as a reaction to such growing discontent amongst the general populace as well as amongst the academicians regarding the supposed position of academicians and particularly scientists in, in any country. Now, HSS disciplines, for instance, it provide context for societal understanding, cultural training. It provides us understanding of moral issues and ambiguities. As I told you, things that are non-quantifiable, things that are controversial, things that are ambiguous, which is laden with ambiguity, only social science and humanities can put it into, per, per, into perspective and can provide an understanding of that. So, subjects like social sciences, they provide cultural training. Students understand and appreciate cultural diversity. They appreciate the very fact that differences exist. Idea is not to eliminate the differences. Idea is not to homogenize the cultural practices idea is to respect such difference, respect such diversity. Now, this is a very important issue uh, all over the world, that ability to appreciate and understand cultural differences, the cultural trending, cultural sensitivity, social sciences and humanities through their subjects, they help the students understand that better. Now, as I told you earlier, the failure of big technology 
like large dams, ethical questions in uh, genetic engineering, all this led to questioning the assumed value neutrality of science and technology. There are so many controversial issues, so many debates that is uh, rising within genetic engineering regarding cloning, regarding human cloning, regarding genetically modified crops, the issues uh, regarding the construction of big dams and the technology that is involved and the human cost, environmental cost, economic cost of such big dams and all these things led to more and more appreciation of the role of humanities and social sciences in academics in general and their positioning in technology institutes in particular. Now IITs have based themselves on the MIT model. The IITs came up thanks to the uh, Sarkar committee which was formed in 1946 and this committee felt that the existing engineering colleges it failed to integrate science, engineering and humanities. So, Sarkar committee way back in 1946 felt the need for inclusion of humanities and social sciences in the proposed IITs. The IITs was, were supposed to overcome this lacuna. Hence, so there was a strong recommendation for establishment of departments of humanities and sciences in upcoming technology institute that is IIT. So, that was a Sarkar committee report. But over a period of time, we have seen that the kind of subjects that is chosen by the social sciences or by the subjects that is uh, emphasized upon in IITs, it, it leads us to think that two models are at work in the IITs simultaneously and in fact there are two models of, of social science and humanities in general the service model and the core model. Now Pravinder Kaur argues that there are certain issues or problems with the service model of humanities and social sciences in any university and particularly in technology institutes. Now, what are the issues that are involved with service model of humanities and social sciences? Service model essentially emphasizes upon, lays emphasis on, gives importance to perceived usefulness. A subject is there in the institute because of its perceived usefulness. For example, in a society like India with variable English language skills that is in general Indians are weak in English, in communicating in English, in writing in English, right. Particularly the engineering students are found to have in general weaker in English, English communication, English grammar, English writing. But English is also considered to be very important ingredient for success in respective careers. If you have understanding of good understanding of English grammar, if you can communicate well, then you stand a very good chance of getting a lucrative position in the industry, in multinational companies, in computer firms. Now, this is a foregone conclusion in Indian society for the last 30, 40 years. So, how do we solve this problem? How do we solve the problem of improving campus placement of engineering graduates who are coming from IITs? Let us establish language labs in the IITs. Let us start courses on technical communication where the engineering students would be trained in English grammar, would be trained to speak English well in, in, in language labs and that would allow them to get better jobs in campus placements or, or outside. Hence, in within the service model, Professor Ravinder Kaur C argues that IIT started 
establishing the communication labs, the language labs, more updated, more advanced the language lab, better it is, better importance it has, better it has potential to, to, to um, take students from, from an unpolished state to state of sophistication in English that will allow them to compete in the global market. Now, psychology lab also to a lesser extent serves that purpose. Hence, emphasis is given in IITs to psychology lab to English uh, uh, language labs and courses in communication. These courses are considered as very important for the general improvement of engineering students to, to increase their marketability. Within social sciences, economics have been uh, holding a very important position because of its closeness to natural sciences and engineering sciences. The closeness lies in the fact that it makes use of statistics and mathematics to a large extent. Hence, it is considered to be important by the IITs and also the very fact that economists have played a very significant role in the policy making of the government, they are given a lot of importance. For instance, uh, P. V. Indiration, the former director of IIT Madras and N. C. Nigam, former vice chancellor of Roorkee University, they co-authored an article talking about the fact that the, what is the position of technology institutes like IITs why excellence is in peril and there they discuss the fact that economists have always been given importance in the planning commission. They have never been engineers who have found a place as members of the planning commission but economists have always got a place. Though engineers are responsible for 80 percent of planned expenditure but it is the economists who are given a lot of importance in policy making of the government. Even in the industry, the climb to the top is through finance or through marketing, not through the engineering ladder. So they themselves, the two engineers, two uh, great engineers of India, when they wrote an article talking about why engineering institutes are in a state of decay. The article was written in early 90s. They also acknowledge the fact that economists are given sometimes more importance than the engineers. And I have already told you that economics because of its quantitative nature, because of its proximity to mathematics and statistics enjoys higher status amongst the social science subjects. But again economics is not taught in its entirety. But the students of uh, IITs or NITs want a course on accounting, course on commerce that would allow them to enter the industry. So there is no appreciation of classical economic theories, rather they just look at one aspect, one dimension of economics which they think is more useful, which provides or serves certain purpose. So, the understanding the core economics is unavailab unavailable to the students. So, the discipline then becomes automatically bifurcated to useful and non-usefulness. Now, the useful aspect is considered or perceived to contribute to skill development. For instance, if you look at the rise of management departments in IITs and in, uh, in universities, all over the country, one can see the market demand for management graduates all over the world and in India. The management, the, the growth of management institutes has been phenomenal since post economic liberalization of India that is since 1991. So many management institutes have been established all over the country. Management as a department, separate department has been established in IITs. If 
we do not create a separate department for management in the technology institutes. Let us have uh, courses related to management and those courses related to, to management can be taught by humanities and social sciences. So, traditionally psychology, sociology, economics, even philosophy in technology institutes like at IITs or NITs have been told to frame their courses, formulate, formulate their courses which would be of some use to the engineering students and which would have some management component. So, let us say courses like uh, industrial sociology, courses like professional ethics which is floated from philosophy, courses like organizational behavior, courses like group dynamics, courses like managerial economics, all these things all these courses attest to the fact that there is a service model in operation in IITs or in technology institutes in general. And there is something wrong with that. That is how Professor Ravinder Kaur argues. In such scenarios, HSS department has been reduced to specialized cells dealing with technical communication or organizational behavior or industrial sociology as I told you. But such love affair with the management can end as soon as there is a change in market demand. Like for instance, she says, now Wall Street now is looking for uh, students having a PhD degree in core sciences or pure sciences. For instance, uh, instead of a degree in management, they prefer a student having a degree in mathematics or a degree in uh, uh, physics. Hence. The, the, the importance given to management according to her it depends upon the market. If there is a change in market demand, there will be change in perception regarding certain subjects. So, service model of humanities and social sciences uh, has had a hard time accommodating the core discipline on their own merits. When we teach in IITs, what we do not teach is the core aspect. We teach subjects such as industrial sociology or, or, or subjects like science technology and society or technical communication or managerial economics or organizational behavior. So, the core subjects like for instance in sociology, sociology of backward classes, so, uh, the, the, the subject, a subject on Indian society, classical sociological theory or modern sociological theory or a subject on um, political sociology, all these things get ignored, sidelined. And if such subjects do figure in technology institutes, then it gets internally split into their usefulness and non-useful components. So, there is always an emphasis on only teaching the useful component of social sciences to the engineering students. So, that destroys the very essence of social sciences or humanities which makes them a source of critical questioning and thoughts. Now, here I will I'll end my lecture, uh, till now I have discussed the justification for social sciences in, in, in technology institutes and the service model of humanities and social sciences as uh, discussed by Ravinder Kaur. So, in the next lecture I will continue the discussion forward and talk about the core model and the difference in university model as well as IIT model. Thank you.